so much, Dr. Diaz. Okay, I'm going to introduce the next speaker, uh, Wilfredo Amir Ruiz. In addition to being an attorney, Wilfredo Amir Ruiz is a chaplain. Wilfredo is currently the Communication Director for CARE Florida, having served as its Civil Rights Legal Counsel for over four years. In 1993, he joined the U.S. Navy Judge Advocate General's Corps, where he acted as a defense and legal assistant counsel. Along with his honorable discharge, he was awarded the Navy Achievement Medal in 1997. And in 1998, he engaged in the private practice of legal profession. In 2005, Ruiz decided to formalize his graduate studies in religion at the Hartford Seminary in Connecticut, where he was admitted to the master's degree program in Islam and Christian Muslim relations. Later, Wilfredo rejoined the Navy as a Naval officer in the U.S. Navy Chaplain Officers Corps and attended the Navy Chaplain School at Newport, Rhode Island. He has worked as a chaplain in Connecticut Valley Hospital and also as the Religious Service Specialist and Coordinator at the U.S. Homeland Security Immigration Service Processing Center in Puerto Rico in Miami, Florida. In December of 2007, he had the opportunity to perform Hajj, the major Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca. Mr. Ruiz has been a regular columnist for newspaper electric media, electronic media. He regularly engages, he regularly engages, this is not working, is it? Can you hear me? He regularly engages in public presentations at colleges, universities, theological seminars and schools, as well as professional government and civic institutions on a variety of topics involving religion, legal, and foreign policy. He is often interviewed and consulted on national and international media as an expert on politics of Middle East and Muslim world, Islam and, and Christian Muslim relations. In his spare time, Ruiz assists various nonprofit organization and is also a board member of the South Florida Interfaith Workers Justice in Florida. Amir, as he is often called, lives in South Florida with his family. He enjoys national and international traveling as well as reading up on theology, comparative religion, and international politics. His talk will focus on the diverse Islamophobic manifestations and Islamophobia industry reach. Please help me welcome um, Wilfredo Amir Ruiz. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. That means in the name of our Lord, the most gracious, the most merciful. That's how we Muslims normally begin any of our daily affairs acts, uh, from waking up to cooking to eating to working. So, as I was listening to that video that was shown to you earlier, I heard people who call themselves patriots asking American Muslims to go back to their country. Really, in America, nobody's from here but the Native Americans. So everybody is an immigrant in this country. If you're not a Native American, you are a product of this country's immigration. So to ask somebody to go back to their country, is, it makes really no sense. And what it really portrays is a level of, level of hatred, a level of ignorance, and a level, a high level of unpatriotic expressions. How many of you, looking at that flag, that symbolizes September 11 Memorial, what happened in September 11. How many of you know that almost 100 Muslims were killed on that day? How many of you knew that before today? How many of you know that the main victims of extremism and terrorism around the world are Muslims? The extremists and terrorists around the world kill and rape 
and kidnap and torture more Muslims than people of all the other religions together. So the main victims of terrorism and extremism in the world are us Muslims. How many of you know the religion of the person who burned the Fort Pierce Mosque? Do any of you know? Do you think if the name of that person who burned a worship center was Muhammad something, would his religion be portrayed in the media as something related to burning a worship center? So that tell us that there's a long way for us as Americans to walk to accept that Muslims are already an integral part of the American fabric. During this campaign, we saw the example of the Han family, somebody who died, put his life at stake in the middle of a war situation to save the lives of fellow Americans serving with them. But how many of you know that over 10,000 Muslims are serving today in the armed forces of this nation? How many of you know that? Very few. This morning, thousands of American Muslims woke up and wore their military uniform or the police uniform or the sheriff uniform or their suits as law enforcement agents to keep us safe. Because this is not the narrative that is convenient to the Islamophobic industry to portray about Muslims. They rather portray Muslims as people who don't belong to this nation, people that are not from here, or people that contribute very little or nothing, or what is worse, put you in danger. Some people do that out of hate. There are people who are racist. They're always going to be racist. And their sole purpose of demonizing Islam and Muslims is because they cannot tolerate people of other faiths next to them. Those people, for the past generations, were fortunately for all of us operating in the margins where they belong. Because our nation, especially since Martin Luther King and Malcolm X offered their blood and lives to ensure that Americans all are protected by the institutions and their civil rights are not stepped upon. And today, we stop everything we do to commemorate Martin Luther King. In June 1, 2, in the 1st of June and the 2nd of June of 1939, the MS St. Louis, that is a ship, a German ship carrying almost a thousand Jews running away from the Holocaust wanted to dock in Fort Lauderdale. Do you think the Jews were welcome here? You know what happened to them? We said, we don't want any refugees. You go back. But we're, uh, we're being murdered by the millions. We don't care. We won't give you any refuge here in this land. So you thousand Jews, 
go out of our country. You don't belong here. They were sent, they went back. They tried to do the same in Cuba. And unfortunately, they needed to return back to Europe. And their fate and their blood is probably on the hands of the Americans who refused that humanitarian act of accepting a thousand refugees that wanted to dock here in Fort Lauderdale in 1939. So when we hear about the Judeo-Christian tradition of America and all that discourse, that is a lot of time inappropriately used and politically used, we need to review our history of how we have behaved with our Jewish Americans or the Jewish communities or perhaps the Catholics when we didn't allow them to build churches in New York because they did not belong. This was a Protestant nation. Churches in New York? No, you don't build churches here. Catholics leave. Mormons leave. They needed to go to a very unwanted territory of Utah. That's why we have Utah today with millions of Mormons because nobody in America wanted to deal with them and nobody of America accepted them. Now they're a thriving community like the Jewish community, but that they have fought for the rights and they stood tall not tolerating xenophobia. And they built their institutions and they built their organizations and they knew that we needed to ins they needed to insert themselves into the civics of this society so when somebody step on your civil rights you sue them and you touch their pockets and their and that's where they hurt them. Unfortunately in this nation, when people listen to you, if when you put your hand in their pockets and purses. If you don't sue them, tomorrow they'll do the same. So that's why, as other communities have done in the past, the Muslim community organized, emulating the African-American community organizations for civil rights, the NAACP, the other Jewish organizations like ADL, into organizing, into having experts teams ready standing by to protect their constituents against the ever-present racists and xenophobes because somebody who hates a religious minority, they hate all religious minorities. So when you hear somebody slandering Islam and Muslims and you do nothing, wait because your turn will come soon. Because we are in a very dynamic society where the demographics are constantly changing. There were a couple of million Muslims probably 10 years, uh, 20 years ago. Now there are estimates that surpass the Pew, the Pew Research Institute, estimates of 3.1 million, and they put the Muslim population close to 10 or 12 million Muslims in America. There are over a, close to 200 Islamic centers in Florida only. We estimate Muslims in the tri-county area of Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami to be close to 175,000, more or less the same amount of Muslims in the Hillsborough County and Tampa area. Another 100,000 in the central Florida area. So we estimate that there should be around 700,000 Muslims in Florida alone. And Muslims are no longer necessarily immigrants. I'm myself Puerto Rican and I'm a born American citizen. So my, were my parents, my grandparents, who have also served historically, generationally to the armed forces. My grandparents, both of them served in the armed forces. My uncle was an Air Force major. My aunt was an Army colonel. My brother was a Navy lieutenant. I myself was also a Navy lieutenant. 
So people who are xenophobes, Islamophobes, they don't know that when I went to the chaplain school, I shared quarters with priests, with rabbis, with Mormons, with Buddhists. We were sharing quarters, rooms, meals, breakfast, classes. We worked together. And I learned in the chaplain school that all those differences that we highlight when we want to be racist and xenophobes, when you're hurt in battle, and somebody's calling for their chaplain, they say, could you bring a chaplain to me because I'm about to die. By the way, could you bring a Presbyterian Protestant chaplain to me? Do you think they do that? Do you think when somebody's about to lose their life, they care about who's praying for his well-being next to him? That is what is really America. So people who have embraced, like the president-elect, that during his campaign, he embraced a xenophobic and Islamophobic discourse and this rhetoric what he's hurting is not the Hispanics. What he, who he's hurting is not the Muslims. When somebody embraces that political rhetoric, he's really hurting the, the essential fabric of what America is. So when any of us stand idle and we just tolerate it, You might be helping to promote it. A few months ago, I was in a synagogue sharing with a friend of mine, Rabbi, a training, not a training, a, a presentation on Islam in, in Islamic Spain, in Al Andalus, from 711 to 1492. There were Islamic governments in Spain, and there was a time in history where the Jewish community thrived. It thrived so much that even their theological, theology, theology scholars like Maimonides, he thrived during that era of Muslim governments in Spain. And he was awarded the opportunity not to just participate with the people of his religion, but to be part of the government and to be close to the cabinet or close to the caliph. That was when people can put away the fears that Dr. Diaz was talking about and say, how can we work together? So that is possible. It's not an utopia. So some people do it because they are just haters. They're racists. Very little you can do about it. But I'm going to just spend a couple of minutes driving your attention to this report. This is an Islamophobia report. This one was done, commissioned by the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, and it was prepared by the University of California in Berkeley, the Center for Race and Gender. So in a scientific way, they were able to identify the Islam of how the Islamophobia industry in America works and how much money it moves. They identified that from 2007 to 2013, that Islamophobia industry moved more than $200 million. So there are people that are Islamophobes, and they're haters, and they carry this discourse against Islam and Muslims, demonizing Islam, stereotyping Muslims, because they make a living, a good living out of it. Millions of dollars are given to people who hold their websites, who make publications, who produce DVDs, who, who convene meetings, who come and disrupt events, who gather those groups to disrupt Muslim events, even a charity event. They get paid for it. And they get paid by the hundreds of millions of dollars. So 
I want to leave this. I, I will leave these copies for the for the library here. Uh, but this this uh, report can be easily accessed on a PDF form electronically if you visit Islamophobia.org. Org. You will see. You can see the report as in paper, in PDF, uh, in, in that website prepared by Care Florida. <coughs> From 2014 to 2015, we experienced in Florida, just in Florida, a 500% increase on hate incidents and hate crimes. From 2014 to 2015, already we are experiencing record numbers of Islamophobic incidents in Florida. Bullying to our kids. When people call, we, our office in Care Florida, we received this past year over a thousand calls of people asking for our help. Over a thousand per year. I got a call a few days ago, a uh, few months ago, actually. A, uh, my kid is being a victim of bullying at school. I say, okay, ma'am, what we usually do we try to bring the other kids' parents together, talk about the discrepancy that is going among the kids, because kids are kids. Probably we can fix this in an educational meeting. Say, no, no, you don't get it, attorney. It is his teacher who's calling him Taliban and rackhead and terrorist. So, when a Muslim parent leaves their kids at school and trusting them to be protected by the administration and teachers, what he's finding, unfortunately, here in Florida, many cases of bullying by teachers. Needless to say, the most prominent Islamophobic expressions, like the setting of fire on fire of the Fort Pierce Mosque, Muslims' houses being shot at, Cars being driven against women while exiting the mosque. Women being asked here in Palm Beach to leave a shopping center when they're in line to buy their food in a food court in a, in a shopping center. I mean, I mean, in a mall. You need to leave, man. Why? I'm buying food for my kids. No, you cannot be dressed like this in the shopping mall. Leave now. Or a woman pouring gas. I want $20 of gas. In Pope 4, hey, 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 come here. We don't want your kind of people here. Go, get the gas somewhere else. These are real cases. These last two are here in Palm Beach County. But we can go on and so on and so on and come to the conclusion that these organizations that are here in some posters inside it, it's called the Outer Court, are helping fund the Islamophobia industry and also it identifies who are the actors of the Islamophobia industry. And guess what? Do you think there are Muslims in the Islamophobia industry? Yes. Do you think there are Jews? Yes. Do you think there are Christians? Yes. Do you think there are atheists in this list? Yes. Because what happened, and this is something that I want you to take with you home, that extremism and intolerance, they don't have a religion. You can find people who claim to be Muslims or Jews or Christians or atheists or humanists that are intolerant and racist. Same goes with extremism and same go with terrorism. It doesn't belong to the far right of the political spectrum, on the far left of the political spectrum. It doesn't belong to the Muslims, or to the Jews, or to the Christians, or Buddhists, or any religion at all. It belongs to what the doctors say, to this essence of human nature, that unfortunately, there is a dark space inside us that if we're not educated,
it goes the wrong way. Do you think any of us are born a bigot? What do you think a two-year-old black guy will do when a, with a two-year-old Chinese guy and a two-year-old Russian guy if they meet? What do you think they're going to do? I bet you that you're going to start playing. Because of bigotry, hatred, Islamophobia, xenophobia is learned. And unfortunately, it's learned by the adults. But it is a reality. It's a reality in our neighborhood. And it's a reality that affects us all. Islamophobia is not a problem of the Muslim community. It is a problem of all of us here in America. So uh, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. I'll be more than welcome to answer your questions. Thank you for your attention.